Greetings, good people. It's a beautiful autumnal evening here. I hope you're doing well. I thought it's about time I made another walkie talkie video. Um, I'm working on a longer form video, like documentary style with scripted narration and artwork and animation and stuff. Um, but I could take a little while and it's important to do these uh, off the cuff kind of videos as well. So <clears throat> you're probably starting to gather that I got some pretty controversial views about science. Um, I didn't come to those lightly, by the way. <laughs> I, uh, you know, it wasn't like I just decided one day to just like jump ship. I obviously went to school and university and got a PhD and everything and and I spent 20 years, you know, continuing to research and try and figure out what's going on and get a fundamental understanding of reality. And in those 20 years, I found the teachings from my physics classes to be uh, incapable of standing up to scrutiny. And there's basically two kinds of science, right? There's positive science, which is science that produces something. You know, it's like empirical, it's practical. The, the theory is applied through a methodology and human labor to create something which is real, functional, or valuable in the world. This is positive sciences. But there's also negative sciences, which don't produce anything. They just use brain power. They use computing power. They, you know, take a lot of time to, you know, do all these equations and solve the equ equations and run the codes and debug them and everything. But nothing is actually produced at the end of it. And I think a lot of people who get into science end up in this kind of position. And, you know, not only do they not produce anything useful for humanity, but they don't really get any real benefit for it themselves either. Uh, it's uh, just like this industry of uh, mindless like calculation of uh, you know, inconsequential theoretical calculations really <clears throat> and I was a part of it and I can see it very clearly now for what it is I can see how I was totally mesmerized by all the equations and all the terminology and I believed in everything literally um, but I was given no alternative no criticism just told this is how it is and you know the awakening that everyone talks about well awakening is it happens to people in all different fields right it's like all different disciplines doctors lawyers physicists like uh, all all kinds of different disciplines have an awakening what happens when they awaken is the things they were taught to believe are no longer believable. And, you know, there's a million different ways you can arrive at it, but that's ultimately what happens. It's just like, it's no longer believable. Uh, I believed it, I bought it for as long as I could. I ran with it, uh, you know, flew the flag, <laughs> but eventually through a bit of questioning and criticism, it just completely dissolves into ashes and is now no longer believable. And, you know, that is where I'm at with a lot of modern science. And uh, it's all theoretical. This is the thing, like there's a whole uh, tower of theories built upon theories. And they all rest on this foundation of atomism. 
which as I say was what I specialized in in my PhD and even I am very very skeptical that there's any such thing as an atom or an electron that exists in the real world and I know people will say oh but what about this and what about that and everything and Frankly, I have considered everything. It's been a really long time. And, uh, you know, I, I, I considered it all. And um, I don't believe in the atomic theory or the nuclear theory any longer. And, you know, this just unravels the whole of modern theoretical science, which is entirely built on this belief system that everything is made from atoms and everything is made by atoms. And what it actually is, these theories are not, um, you know, they're not, they don't just like develop them in isolation, you know, randomly for no reason. They're always built to uh, project a particular worldview, a particular religious belief or a creed. And in the case of atomism, it's just atheism, pure and simple. Uh, atomism is atheism formalized into a scientific worldview. Uh, it essentially, you know, rids, it gets rid of the spirit, the soul, and the creator, and says everything is just little material balls flying around in a vacuum. Uh, and, you know, it's just a model, <laughs> but they actually teach it as if it's a fact. And then people believe, well, that's all, that's all we are. That's all it is. We're all just a bunch of atoms bumping around in space. <laughs> uh, but of course, this is not what, this is not how the ancients understood it at all. The ancient sciences of astrology, alchemy, natural philosophy, all were centered around the human soul and they were spiritual sciences that acknowledged the creator. So <clears throat> it turns out all that was just like eliminated from science throughout the 16, 1700s and the so-called scientific revolution. There were high up groups of people like oligarchs who were adamant that the human soul does not exist and they wanted it removed completely from the sciences. And this is how we have this modern science, which is, you know, completely uh, like a godless creed. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, I used to be an atheist, but life taught me otherwise and uh you know i came to believe in god many years ago and it actually it really helped my understanding of science because i i realized how the science i've been taught is just like this little fraction this little like materialistic shard of science but there's this whole uh picture to science when you include the soul and the spirit and so uh, I think alchemy and astrology are wonderful sciences that teach us about who we are and how we can make uh, practical things in the world and help each other and heal each other. But the modern science that I was taught, as far as I can tell, has not produced anything good or useful. So, yeah, hope that explains a bit where I'm at. Much love.